probably one of the most fascinating things is the fact that he was able to carry on for so long lifting with a back like that. And um, do you mind just uh, talking about, there's a small little section in the book about um, bone callusing, I think it's called, and and how that mechanism works because there is a, as you mentioned, there's there's sort of there's a there's a degree of value in the breaking down of a tissue, as long as it's able to recover and come back stronger. Now we know that with muscles, but as the the book mentions, if I've got this right, that the same things happening with with bone and with vertebrae, uh, with regards to building um, stronger joints, I would imagine. Yes. Well, I, I, I could take that answer in, in several directions, but let me just uh, answer uh, bone callusing, and then I'm going to talk about sclerotic uh, bone uh, simply for power lifters. But uh, bone callusing is this. Um, if you take a long bone, say, say your forearm bone, and if you were to bend the bone, the outside of the bend goes into... Uh, tension and the inside of the bend goes into compression uh, at, at the bone level itself. So say you were to fracture that, um, uh, you would build a callus of bone over the fracture uh, and that would be even stronger than the original uh, what we would call uh, or refer to as virgin bone. So that's an example of bone callusing in long bone. And, and the mechanism is this. Bone is a piezoelectric crystal. It behaves like uh, certain crystals and metals, actually. Um, when you stress a bone, it builds up an electric charge at the site of greatest stress. Um, the free-floating ions uh, of magnesium and calcium, in other words, the basic um, elements that, that form bone, and, and some of them are metals, um, they are charged. And when you build a piezoelectric charge on a bone with stress, it sucks in more of those charged ions and lays them down. And, and there's a matrix that, that, that gets b built up or a scaffolding and, and more matrix of bone. So that's how bone has this intelligence or knows where to lay down bone. So, so that's, that's an explanation of bone callusing and, and how it works in long bone. But vertebra are different. They're blocks of bone. And uh, I've done it a couple of times with other athletes uh, and I said to Brian, well, uh, first of all, uh, you know, let, we, we'll get you out of pain, which we did do. And then I said, uh, if you really want the next world record, I'd advise you not to. My advice is just enjoy a pain-free, happy life now. Why take the risk of, of really major uh, damage? It's something that you could never recover from. But he said, no, let, let's do it. And I said, well, here's what I know about um callusing vertebra, but you'll be the, the, the third or, or the, the, the fourth athlete. Uh, it's an experiment in progress with no uh, guarantees. But uh, he was committed enough to it. So what you do is you give a little bit of load stimulus to the bone, and then you give uh, two or three or maybe even four days off of load. So that creates the charge lays down more calcium, magnesium, and, and the, the building elements of bone, and it allows it to stick and calcify in, if, if I could use that term. And then you repeat that, another four-day cycle, another four-day cycle. I would like to do it for a year and really build that foundation. But Brian sped it up. I think after several months, he then started to uh, add uh, training and uh, it was successful. And, and the before and after um, MRI images, I mean, the first one, you describe it, it was a horrific injury. The sacrum is split apart. And yet, uh, two years later, the bone callusing had filled in all of the split and uh, L5 was built back again. So it's a testament to how l a proper loading allows a tissue to remodel and and build back to uh, somewhat of its original form. 
Um, in that same chapter of the book, um, I also show micro CTs of, uh, of vertebra. And uh, then it allows me to tell the story of why some people hurt their backs deadlifting and then never recover. And, and the reason is this. If the average power lifter or strength athlete, say a rugby player who's trained a few years, went and had a, a, a CT scan of their spine, the report would probably come back and say you have sclerotic end plates, which means very heavy, glowing uh, end plates. And uh, that's an adaptation because strength athletes create very small micro fractures uh, in the in the um, scaffolding of bone just underneath the end plates, which are the top and bottom of the vertebra, when they train heavy. So the trick is they do create those micro fractures, but they, they use training cycles. They don't overtrain. They'll take load and they might, uh, say, go through a two or three week training cycle. And then they have a, a one week deload cycle. It's the people who think more is better, they continue to train day in and day out, and I'll say to them, when was the last time you had a day off? And they look at me as if I'm from Mars. And they're not training scientifically. The bone adaptation takes place when you rest, not when you continue to load it. So the microfracturing <clears throat> in, the, in the vertebra actually grows and grows and grows. And sooner or later, the rate of repair is outstripped by the cumulative fracturing that takes place. And then they start getting a disc bulge because the fibers that form the rings of the disc start to dislodge off the, off the they're called Sharpies fibers that, that go into the bone, but the bone's breaking underneath. So now this allows the uh, delamination of the fibers in the annulus to proceed. So it's a house of cards. But um, the, 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 of, of course, great strength athletes have built the sclerotic bone very uh, cleverly. In other words, they've calloused their own spines. It's the people who violate this scientific principle and just train, 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 not allowing proper adaptation, and then they get into real trouble as the um, collagen fibers start to rip off the bone and they end up getting disc bulges and uh, they don't know how to uh, train their way out of it. But it is uh, training cycles uh, that we describe in the book, of course. But uh, I hope that gives a, a general overview of the whole adaptation process and uh, how to make it work for you. You have to follow biology and science. Uh, it's just the way it is. <laughs>